Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this video is mostly for other teachers or students that are interested. This fall, I was looking for a viral replication simulation. I found a few things online, uh, but nothing that really fit my class and what I wanted to do. So I was going for a run one morning, thought this up, and so I wanted to share it with you, some of the results, and uh, I hope that you're able to improve on it uh, because I think it's kind of a neat simulation. Basically, the three things that I used were, number one, Moodle, which is our messaging system. So we use the, the uh, instant messaging system system within Moodle. We also used Google Docs, so the kids were able to enter in the infection that they got into Google Docs. We were able to track the virus as it mutated and changed over time. This is how it sits today. Um, so we had, by the end, something like 89 different strains. Yeah, 267 people were infected. So we used the Google Docs to track the virus. And the last thing we used were these dice. And so um, if you're as old as I am, you know that these are Dungeons & Dragons dice. Uh, I don't play Dungeons & Dragons, haven't done so for quite a while. Um, but basically, I was able to use some of these 20-sided, 8-sided, and 4-sided dice um, to do some of the randomness in the replication of the the viruses. Uh, I basically had the dice in the front of the room because I only had one set and then kids would come up when they needed to use the dice. So basically the infection started on day one with a message from Babe Hithertwit that was sent to three random students in each of the three different classes. So three total random students. It started with just three infections. Basically they got this message. It said, you are infected, and then it had the RNA sequence of the virus. And so that was important. So I started with AAA, UUU, CCC, GGG, AAA, UUU. That was the first infection. So that's the first strain. Basically, once you got a Moodle message, then if you'd already been infected five times, do nothing. I added this because I didn't want this to run forever. I wanted to be a finite amount of infections. Next thing I did is I said, if you'd already been infected by this virus, do nothing as well. And so Every time they got infected by a virus, they'd enter the strain into a Google Doc so they could see what they got, when they got it. And so if they actually had that infection before, then we thought of it as you have an immunity to that, so you're not going to get it. So don't do anything. But if neither of these apply to you, then you follow the following directions. And these are all in Moodle. So first thing, you copy and paste the received, uh, this should say RNA sequence, into the following form. So they click on a form, and it would just basically say, what's your name, and then what sequence uh, of RNA did you get? And then the next thing they would do is they would roll the eight-sided die. So they would roll the eight-sided dice. Basically, if you got a one through three, you would copy it to one, two, or three a close contacts. Now, a close contact I defined as somebody who you spend time around in class, or we have iPads in class, so if you share an iPad with them, then you're a close contact. So basically, if you got a one, you sent this RNA on, saying you're infected to one other student, a two, you send it to two. A three, you send it to three. But you send it exactly the way that you got it. If you got a four or a five, then you wouldn't do anything. We said the, the virus failed to uh, transfer or replicate to another person. And then the next thing we had, six, seven, or eight, if you got a six, then you'd send it to one close contact, but it would have one mutation. Uh, seven, two uh, close contacts with one mutation. And an eight, you'd send it to three close contacts with a mutation. And so anecdotally, uh, girls were more <laughs> likely to want to roll a four or five because I think they didn't want to infect somebody else. Guys uh, loved rolling an eight because they wanted to mutate it and then send it to three other. That's I'm totally stereotyping, but I did see that uh, in class. Next thing we did is we determined the mutation. So to determine the mutation, you'd roll a 20-sided dice. So that's a die that looks like this. Um, basically, if you rolled a 19 or a 20, you wouldn't do anything because there are only 18 nucleotides in the sequence. Uh, and then whatever number you got, that would determine what nucleotide had mutated, then you'd roll the four-sided dice, and that would tell you what it's going to change to. In other words, if you roll a one, it's going to turn to an adenine. So basically, those were the ground rules. I had no idea what was going to happen. I just sent out these three messages, and then it took off. So example, let's say that I've been infected, so I get this first strain. Um, first thing I'm going to do is roll the eight-sided dice to see what happens next. And so I got a five, and so that would mean I don't send it to anybody. If I roll it again, maybe the next time I'm infected, I get a three, and that means that I'm going to send it to three of my close contacts, three Moodle messages, and, but I don't mutate it. And let's say I roll a 
<laughs> six. So let's say I roll a six, um, then I'm going to you know, put the data in the form first, but then I'm going to mutate it once and I'm gonna send it to one other close contact. So let me show you how the mutation works. Basically you'd roll the 20 sided dice, and so I got a one. So I got a one on the 20 sided dice. That means that basically I'm gonna be mutating this first letter from an A, and now I'm gonna roll the four sided dice and I get a three, if you don't know how to read that, so that'd be a three. And so what that means is this is gonna turn from a A to a C. So this is gonna to turn to a cysteine. So what am I gonna pass on? Well, I'm gonna send the same message, but it's gonna have that one point mutation. So now I'm gonna make that one change, leave everything else the same. I'm gonna copy and paste this message, and I'm gonna send that, since I rolled a six, I'm just gonna send it to one other person. Now if I were to do this again, I would make mutations much less likely. You could use a different kind of a dice to do that. Uh, I would make it less likely that it can actually spread. I had too many mutations and too much viral spreading. Um, if I were to do it again, I think that would be a little bit more realistic, but uh, I, I think I had too many different strains. But basically, show you, let me show you the results. So after 1.5 hours, and I used a pivot table, to show me, pivot table to show me the different types of the virus, you can see after 1.5 hours, we basically, 90% of the infections at this point were that original strain, and then we had two other strains. If I remember right, we had something like 10 total infections. Now, three hours in, you can see that the number of Strains we have is greater. Uh, we have way more infections. At 4.5 hours, we have way more. Um, so basically, we have 20 different strains at this point. And then after six hours, we had something like 40 different strains. So we started to see exponential growth as I look back at the data. And I also started to see all these viruses starting to appear. And so that was pretty cool because I could have that up on the board in the front of the room and the kids could kind of watch as the virus changed. Uh, over the course of just two class periods is the data that I have right here. So that was neat. Kids were able to see how a virus can spread really quickly. All of a sudden, there's one or two people in the front of the room rolling the dice, but pretty soon it ended up being like a line in the front of the room. Oh, I was infected again, infected again, and the kids really uh, had fun sending it to somebody else and choosing who that was. I got infected like five times as well by boys, of course. Uh, but basically, I grabbed some of the data right here. And this is not all, obviously, of the different strains. We had about 89 strains, but I just copied and pasted some of them. And so why I like this so much is it was fun, it was interactive. You could see how viruses change and how organisms may mutate and change over time. But the cool thing is now I have this data that I could actually use in class. And so when you're talking about evolution, and you're talking about like phylogeny and how species are related, uh, this is great data. In other words, there were 38 people of 86 people in my classes that were infected by this strain. So this is that original strain. So the most popular strain, of course, is gonna be that first one that was spread out. Now we also had some other ones. So this one is pretty popular as well. So this 10 people were infected by that. If we look at this one right here, AAA, UUU, CCC. So here's our mutation right here. You can see that there was a mutation right there that was spread to 10 people. So this one person you can see rolled, probably, if we think about parsimony or the, the easiest explanation for that is there was probably one mutation, it was passed off. If you look at the one right above it, um, that one had this mutation. So we could say that maybe these two uh, were related. So they came off that same branch, but you can see that there was another mutation there that was popular. Um, whereas this one only infected one person, but it didn't spread from there. So I, I, I could, I'm confident, I could give this data to people maybe to make it reasonable, make it this chunk, and then say, could you construct a phylogenetic tree of that data? And so they could draw, so this this is my original strain, and they could try to construct a phylogenetic tree showing all the branching of all the different types of viruses, and so I think that's neat because that's what life is. Remember, life starts with that first genetic material. It's mutated. It's replicated. The only thing that um, I don't show in the simulation is natural selection. So I was asking one of my, the kids in my class this question, like, how could we make this model natural selection? And, and 
he's being much smarter than I am, said, well, maybe we could make there an advantage to have A's. For example, if you have more A's, then you're more likely to infect. Um, he was thinking maybe it would re reach some you know, evolutionary stabilized selection where it's good to have a lot of A's, but if you have too many A's, then humans are going to start to develop immunity. It's cool when the kids in your class are much smarter than you and they come up with ideas. And so basically, I'd love to get ideas from you as well or feedback. Um, and thanks for listening.